Welcome back. Well, as we're expecting quite a bit of housing data this week, released primarily from government agencies, we thought it might be helpful to take a look at the Zillow data. Specifically, what we're looking at is the Zillow Home Value Index, ZHVI. And the benefit to this is we have a completely different and distinct data source in which to judge the housing market. So when we see the existing homes and the new home sales reported shortly, we can compare it how optimistic or pessimistic to what we see today. This is the monthly change. And what this index very clearly shows is the average home value per region, per state. So on a month-over-month -month basis, the biggest increase is Connecticut. That's around a 1% increase. California, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, those all show just a little bit below 1% for the month. The biggest losers for the past month, Louisiana, down half a percent, followed by North Dakota, South Dakota, Mississippi, Alaska. More telling, though, on a year-over-year -year basis, we see the biggest winners include Connecticut, almost 10% to the upside on a year-over-year -year basis, followed by Maine, New Hampshire, New Jersey, Rhode Island, Wisconsin. The biggest losers include Nevada, down about 4.5%, followed by Idaho, Arizona, Louisiana, and Utah. Certainly a big divergence between the states, though. Now we see, or just on a more graphical uh, point of view, we see how deep the financial recession, specifically the housing market, was in the 2007, 8, 9 financial housing crash. Uh, now, with that said, we did have a very nice recovery, 2013 or so. That, of course, uh, did not surpass what we saw here in 2020, 2021, largely in due to all of that inflation we saw, which certainly did help the housing market. What's surprising, though, is that we see, and these are all the states together, we see how deep we saw on a year-over-year -year basis following that inflationary pressure, the housing market actually came back to the downside. I think as the housing data that's released later on this week, that's going to show a little bit more of an optimistic, a more rosy picture. They don't really show how deep this pullback was in terms of the housing market just this past year. Now we see a very interesting chart. These are all the states in which uh, the majority of second homes are owned. Second homes, vacation homes, are is something that we buy when you know things are good, the economy is very strong, but conversely, when the economy falls into trouble, uh, the second homes, the vacation homes are usually the first thing we sell. Notice what went down the most in the 2008 uh, financial housing market crash, the red line, Arizona. The uh, orange line over here, that was California as well. The white line, Florida. Now, we recovered, but then we see what came down the most in the 2022-23 era, so to speak. The red line, Arizona, just as it did before. The orange line, California, again, just as it did before in 08. But the white line, that really never stayed, and that never really drifted negative. It stayed positive. That's Florida. Now, of course, we can, you know, analyze and make very, very educated guesses about why Florida was different this year as opposed to 2008. And certainly the housing market didn't come down nearly to what it did in the 08 crisis. That certainly was a housing crisis. But interesting to see how, you know, some of the states have shifted positions, so to speak. Now we see here each line represents a different year uh, from January through December. Now the dotted line across the top, that's 2021. On a year-over-year -year basis, we started 2021 about 10% increase year-over-year, -year, and we ended about 15%. 2021 was a good year for the housing market. Well, 2021 ended around 15%, which is where 2022 started. The purple line is 2022. That progressed, and then we saw quite a significant sell-off. We basically gave up most of those gains and ended up down a little bit below 10% on a year-over-year -year basis. 2022 concluded and began 2023, again, about 7% year-over-year. Well, currently, just a couple weeks left for 2023, we're barely positive. But notice what 2023 looks very similar to, the red line. That's 2007. 2007 started the year on 5% year over year, but quickly went down 
uh, to around zero, maybe a little bit above zero for the year. Well, 2007 led into, of course, 2008, the yellow line. The yellow line started around flat for the year. And of course, we had that tremendous housing crash and ended down about 2000, uh, 2008, around down 5%. And 2008 led to 2009 with a recovery. So on a year-over-year -year basis, we can see how one year turns into the next. Well, the question is, will 2023 as 20, 2007 turn into 2008? Will 2023 turn into 2009? It'll be interesting to see. Tell us what you think. Now we see a red line. That's a U.S. home price average. That's you know the, the Zillow index. The white line is a monthly supply. That's the ratio of houses for sale versus houses sold. So when the white line goes up, it means we have more supply. We had a lot of supply in 2008. Well, that was all purchased up. Lots of low interest rates in 2011 through 2015. That really helped. Then we saw you know, the COVID crisis, of course. Supply went back to the upside. We've absorbed a good amount of supply, but we're still you know, higher than we really want to be. A strong housing market looks like what we saw in 2015, 2016, you know, that six to one ratio, so to speak. Uh, now we're above that. And it looks like the supply is starting to creep back to the upside, which I don't think is a good sign. Red line in this case, again, U.S. home price average. White line, new one family home sold. This shows the velocity of the homes being sold. 2008, of course, a huge drop. Nobody wanted to buy a house in 2008 because of the crisis. Well, that recovered very, very nicely and steadily over time. Accelerated uh, after the leading into the COVID crisis with all those low interest rates. Uh, but now we see a real precipitous slowdown. Now it has recovered again to an extent, but you know, opposite of what we just saw with the supply, this of course takes the opposite side of the equation, and we see that the velocity of homes being sold really just can't keep up. And notice also very interesting, we once upon a time had a very strong correlation. The Zillow data, which is the red line, went down at very, very close. Uh, rate to the new one family home sold. Zillow uh, vet, uh, family home sold. Uh, those home prices declined at the same rate that the velocity, the amount of homes being sold declined as well. Well, the home price increased more recently, very much so, but the velocity did not. And that divergence really does tell us, what does it tell us? Home prices are going up, but the number of homes being sold are not going up. That gap that's the inflation. That's the inflation that's, that's really pushing home values up on a dollar basis, so to speak, but with less homes being sold. Now we see here the U.S. home price uh, in red again. New one family homes for sale. This is a supply. The supply really peaked in 2020. Now, this is a little bit of an unfair comparison, very simply because of the COVID crisis. The housing market was locked down. There, were, there weren't any homes being sold. There weren't any homes being shown. But as the market opened up, all of a sudden we saw the new one family homes for sale. The supply really started to lift. Now, the home price went up, but there weren't any homes being sold. Now that the homes were being sold, the home price is going down. So we see here a convergence of a lot of different factors. And what's really interesting is the dynamic now, because what's happening is the expectation of lower interest rates, the Fed funds futures are predicting even lower interest rates than we spoke about even last week, but or at a more aggressive rate, I should say. But with that said, the question in everybody's mind is, as interest rates come down, as the expectation of interest rates come down, will that lead to more homes being sold out of fear or because maybe the economy is slowing down, maybe the jobs market slowing down, or will all these homes, will they be scooped up with low interest rates or lower interest rates that will make mortgages a little bit cheaper? And then finally, we can see here U.S. home value price in red versus the 10-year Treasury Fed funds rate. And if you haven't looked at the bond market in a little while, things certainly have changed. We saw a peak on the 10-year Treasury bond 
uh, very, very dramatic peak, and that turned to the downside. We've seen a big spill to the downside in the 10-year Treasury bond, obviously with the anticipation of lower rates. Now, white line in particular, what this shows us is the 10-year Treasury minus federal funds, which is an indicator we've spoken about in the past. And it really does give us a lot of insight into the market. Here's how it works. In 2007, we had a, uh, very, uh, certainly a very strong economy. Well, the 10-year Treasury minus Fed funds went down. Why? Because the Fed funds went up so much, they went up you know, even higher than the 10-year Treasury bond. Well, those higher interest rates eventually slow down the markets. Slow down the market, the Federal Reserve had to cut rates, and then the Fed funds crossed back below uh, the 10-year Treasury. Well, eventually this line, the white line, trended to the downside as Fed funds were cut, and then the 10-year Treasury rallied, but then we started to come down. Now we see, more recently, a rise in uh, interest rates and Fed funds rates, which gave us this very, very dramatic bottom. Now, more recently, what we're looking at are Fed funds rates that are very high and Treasury bonds that have begun to fall. Now, if Fed funds fall and we expect this line to go up, we see a strong correlation with the U.S. home price value. There's a strong correlation with a 10-year Treasury bond moves above Fed funds. So what we want to see, the point, the takeaway from this is that we want to see the 10-year Treasury bond you know, first of all, cross above Fed funds rates and remain above, above, above Fed funds rates. That would be a sign of a strong economy. When bond market is anticipating higher interest rates and stronger economic growth, and that would lead this white line up. And very logically, when the white line goes up, also the U.S. home value goes up. But conversely, if Fed funds go up to slow down inflation, to slow down the economy, and conversely, they go up so much that they go above the 10-year treasury and they send this white line into negative territory like we are now, that typically correlates with the U.S. home value price. So what can we take away from this? Uh, you know, Overall, the big message as we look at the housing market later on this week with all of our data, we want to see that, okay, yes, we know federal funds are going to the downside, but we want to see the remainder of the economic numbers show us that the housing market has strength and the economy has strength and the, and the bond market really likes that and the 10-year treasury goes up. That would be you know, conducive of stronger home uh, prices you know, that we've seen here uh, based on Zillow data. So we'll be sure to update you along the way. We have a big economic calendar this week and a lot of how, uh, home builders uh, housing market data as well. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.